Today's Academy video is futuristic. We're going to be talking about how to use AI to improve your note taking. Now, I'm a little bit nervous about doing this video because AI is moving so very fast that I suspect it's going to be out of date pretty soon. Uh, even at the pace that Reflect is shipping new AI features, I already had to add our new AI chat into this one. So if I would have recorded this even uh, just a couple months ago, it would already be out of date. So we'll see how long it lasts. I might have to do an update uh, pretty soon as technology continues to come out. So I guess I'll just start off by giving a little bit of a disclaimer here that um, new things might be out and about, probably are, that are not mentioned in this video. So note that. All the other videos are quite evergreen. They'll stay relevant for a very, very long time and the concepts won't change. This is the only exception. This one might change as AI technology improves, but the good news is it will only improve and things are improving wildly quickly. So I'm gonna cover what is, uh, you know, currently useful in terms of using AI technology for note-taking. I'm gonna talk about the things you're currently able to do using AI in your notes. I will actually show you how to use AI in your notes, and then I'll cover a couple sample workflows that are some of my favorites to help you get started. So let me start by discussing uh, just AI generally and its usefulness for uh, note-taking in terms of the technology. There's really two categories here. So the first is LLMs, large language models. That's what most people are the most familiar with just because of ChatGPT and now Bard and Twitter or X is Brock. <laughs> So there's all sorts of different ones now. Um, we use GPT and Reflect. It has it built in. That's from OpenAI. So that's an example of an LLM. And also transcribers. There's probably more technical language to describe that tech, but basically just using AI to transcribe your voice into notes so that you can take voice notes and they still appear as written text in your notes so that you don't have to go back and keep listening to the audio. So those are the two technologies I'm going to talk about today. There's others out there, but I think these are the most useful for note taking. And again, might have to update that in the future. Okay, so let's talk about what kinds of things you can do in your notes using AI. The first things that we in Reflect started using it for were, I guess I would categorize the first one largely as just formatting. So organizing your notes and kind of connected to that, both summarizing and condensing text. So I guess that is sort of reformat. And so you can do things like take an entire article and you can, um, you know, have it, uh, take the key takeaways from it. You can have it reformat it into a bullet list. You could ask it for the top three most important or most commonly mentioned themes in it. Um, all that stuff There's a ton that you can do with reformatting, uh, text and information and whatnot. So. Very, very useful for that. You can pull key takeaways and action items out of text. So I actually use this a lot just talking to myself with voice notes, which I'll go over in a moment. But you could also, you know, take meeting notes and get the summarizations and, uh, or sorry, the uh, takeaways and action items from it. You could, I don't know, you could, I guess, do that with just even a conversation. It doesn't even have to be a meeting. And it can also help you write. You can use it to edit your existing writing. It can rephrase your writing. You can use it to make your writing sound like other authors. If you just write something and the information's there, but you hate the tone, it's really, really useful for that. If you are roadblocked on an article, you can have it um, continue writing in the same style. I use it for uh, generating article outlines and then helping me write. That's going to be one of the workflows that I talk about at the end here. Uh, you can also do some random things, like you can have it add backlinks to your notes. So that's quite useful if you're someone that's not used to backlinking. It can be kind of fun to run AI on the different texts and just see what it has you backlink. So those are just some examples. There's a ton of different things. I could go on for hours just talking about the different things you could do with AI in your notes. Um, and again, I'll cover a couple workflows, but I do recommend joining the Reflect Discord community and we have an AI channel. No, sorry, we have a workflows channel that we put AI uh, workflows into and people share them there. So I recommend joining that, but those are a couple examples. So let's talk about how to actually apply these things and get them done within your notes. The first thing you're going to need to do is find a tool with AI built in or decide to use external tools. Uh, so I'm here in Reflect, of course, and it has AI built in. 
I will uh, show you how to do that in a moment. But I do want to mention, you know, this academy course is one of force you into a tool and there's just not that many tools that have AI built in. And there's even fewer that have AI built in in a way that works and it's not full of bug. Um, so, you know, you could use ChatGPT. Uh, it works very well. There's still some things I use ChatGPT for. It, of course, then does require you either, you know, exporting the information into your notes or copying and pasting it. Um, and, you know, similarly, there's a tool called Super Whisper that will transcribe your voice in anywhere. It just copies the text to your flipboard. Um, so there's different tools you can use, but I do think it's easier to use one with it just built in. It means you don't have to leave the app and everything is just right there waiting for you. Uh, the second thing is just to get in the habit of transcribing voice notes. So, of course, when you're transcribing a voice note, that's using AI in itself, but it also kind of forces you to get used to using AI to organize and format your notes. Because it's not that helpful to get a giant block of text uh, from a voice note. You usually want it as a list or a to-do list or, um, you know, you want to find the information from within it without keeping all the filler text. So when you start transcribing voice notes, you'll find that you run AI prompts on most of them. And that really helps you get in the habit of also running the AI prompts. Once you start doing that and you find useful things, start setting up some workflows. So uh, start by experimenting with pre-built prompts if you're using an AI tool. And then from there, start setting up your own custom ones. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a second as well. But lastly, uh, I want to mention you can chat with your notes. So that is the new feature that I hinted on in the beginning. You can select notes in the search and uh, do things to chat with them. So uh, I think I included that one. I'm going to include a chat example. You're going to do a chat with a research paper because that's my favorite example. So I'll add that one in. Okay. Um, actually, before I go into that next section, so let me just kind of cover very, very briefly how Reflex AI tool works. The AI assistant, you first select text like this, and I'm not actually going to run it, but I'm going to pull up the AI assistant using command J. And here I have a list of AI prompts. These ones in the bottom section are pre-written by Reflex. They're called system prompts. So uh, you can see from the one dimensions that help with writing, that help with formatting, making suggestions, generating uh, arguments and outlines, all that good stuff. Um, and then on top, I have my custom prompts. And these are the ones that I have written myself and have saved. So to give you an example, let me go down and it won't work because I didn't select very good text, but just to show you how it works, I'll click select, write a blog post. If I click on this drop down here, uh, we see this text. This is the prompt. Again, this is pre-built by the system. And then it starts putting the result down here. This will take a while because it's a whole blog post, but once it finishes, it gives me an option to replace the text or insert it. And if I want to make my own custom prompt, I can choose to clone it and give it my own name and then save it. And that'll be my own custom prompt. Oh, now it finished running. So you can see I could replace it, copy it, insert it, or rerun it if I'm not happy. So that craft course to the AI assistant within Reflect. And, you know, you can just set up the custom prompts. It, it doesn't work like chat. Uh, it's an assistant, not a chat, but you can do a lot of the same things with it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna discard that. And then, you know, for transcribing audio notes, again, Reflect has it built in, so I can just click this microphone here, and then it will start transcribing everything that I say here. And it's very accurate, by the way. It does it with near human level accuracy. And once that transcribes, it lands in your daily note. So I'm sure we'll see that later, and I'll kind of go through an example with that with a workflow. but. You can also do that on the mobile app. You can run the AI assistant on the mobile app. And I think that these are the easiest ways to uh, use it. And then to do chat with your notes, again, I'll do an actual workflow with this one, but you just put in some parameters uh, within the search. This is gonna be kind of nonsense because it's a fake uh, note frames. And then you click chat and you can use one of these pre-built systems or you can start asking a thing. So I'll do the research paper example with that in the next section. But let me go on to the last workflow part. So this is the fun part. I'm going to show you some things to do with AI in your notes. The first one I'm going to do is transcribing a voice note for a daily reflection. And then I'm going to run my AI prompt on it. 
I wanted to show this one because it's the one that I do every single morning. It's one of the favorite parts of my morning, and I really think it just makes everything click. It makes note taking click. It makes using AI click. It makes voice notes click. It's just really wonderful. I will warn you, I've created a shortened workflow of this for, or sorry, a uh, shortened custom prompt for this because of my daily reflections actually a little long and I didn't want this to be a 30 minute video. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a short one. But what I do is I go to my daily notes, which is right here. This is all just kind of nonsense stuff. So uh, from my last demo, so I'm gonna erase that and pretend like this is the first thing I'm doing in the morning. And just to kind of show you, I need to put in some filler text there to pull this up. I'm going to be using my daily reflection custom prompt. Uh, oops, no, I'm gonna use the short one. Short, there we go. And this has my format for my daily reflection in it. And that just means that I can just ramble in about all this stuff. So I've got uh, a reframing exercise and gratitude, a top priority, and then what I wish I was doing in that day. And then I can just kind of, you know, talk in the car, talk while taking a walk and then it'll format it for me. So let's give it a whirl. This is gonna be awkward because I'm gonna make up some stuff because I'm not gonna tell you what I actually put in my daily reflection. So let's go. This is my daily reflection. I'll start off with reframing. So I'm going to start by giving something that I'm worried or anxious about and then uh, reframe it to be more positive. So today I am a little bit anxious about a doctor's appointment that I have um, for an injury that hasn't been healing as quickly and I'm worried the news is going to be bad. Reframing this in a way that might not be nothing to worry about I'm actually going to the doctor today, so this is my chance to solve it. It's not a bad thing, it's actually a good thing. And I should view going to the doctor as a way to make progress on health issues. For my gratitude, things I'm thankful for, I'll just do probably two here to save time. Uh, one thing I am grateful for today, it's super nice outside. It almost feels like a spring day here in Colorado. And I get to go on a walk with my sister's dog, which I'm very, very uh, looking forward to. And the second thing, I got more than seven hours of sleep last night, which is great for me because I have not been surpassing five recently for some reason. So I'm very excited to break that streak. Okay, and then my top priority for the day is to create this Academy video for Reflect. And my last thing, what do I wish I was doing today? I kind of wish I was out skiing. There's no new snow, but I wish it had snowed a lot here and I was having a sweet ski day. Uh, okay, so that's it. Sorry that was kind of awkward. I tried to choose answers that were a little bit, uh, I don't know, not cringy. So that will take a uh, about a minute, I don't know, to come into the daily note here. By the way, you can transcribe really, really long calls, like an hour plus, I've done it before. It will take a while for the transcription to arrive in your daily note. So the longer your uh, voice transcription is, the longer it will take. But I get this little notification here that tells me it is transcribing. And you might have also seen the thing pop up before it disappeared here at the bottom that just says it's going to go. So I'll give it just a couple of seconds and oh, no, never mind. There it is. OK, so this is my whole daily reflection. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to pull up that same custom prompt that I have and I'll expand that again. It's just going to put it into this format here and you well, see it. It's still in kind of markdown, I think, uh, format or HTML, I'm not sure, here. And when I replace it, you will see it will actually execute these items here. So I will click replace, and there we go. Uh, and then I'll erase the audio memo, and now I can collapse it. So I've got a backlink at the top here, and I have this really, really nice formatted daily reflection. And I can also, if I go into this note here, it's also in the incoming backlink section. So I can go back and see all of the days that I have done a daily reflection, which is kind of fun. So that's an example that I use every single day uh, using both of the AI tools within Reflect. So let me go back into my academy. That is that one done. And recording meetings on a call. So I'm not actually going to show you this one because this isn't a real meeting, but it works basically the exact same way. I would take a recording here and you know, might be like a 30 minute call, might be an hour long one. So you're going to have a very, very long audio note land in your daily note. But then I'm going to just pull up, this will be fake again, but uh, I will pull up the, I think I called it my executive assistant. Um, what did I call that? 
Oh no, I think I changed the name for a past demo video. Yeah, I now call it key takeaways and action items. And what this does, if I just pull up the little formatting here, same thing as the daily reflection, it will give it some instructions and then um, instruct it to put it into several categories, key takeaways and action items. The key takeaways then get formatted as a bullet list and the action items as a checklist. Really, really nice. I love running this on meetings. But honestly, I just love running the transcriptions on meetings because I have a goldfish brain and I can just go back and look exactly what someone said, which is really, really nice. I don't have to remember it. And you don't have to take meeting notes. Me taking meeting notes is awful when you're on a meeting. You want to just focus on the conversation and get as much done on the call as possible. You don't have to be like sitting there awkwardly typing while people are waiting for you. So record meeting notes on a call. Again, that one also uses both the tools. All right, using AI to write articles. Now, this is another one I can't show you the whole thing because it would be painfully uh, long and boring probably, but I do want to go through my process for them. Um, so first, I'll extract the information. So whatever the topic is, there will be some information in my head. I'll say I'm writing an article for my newsletter on content marketing as an example. And what I will do on my lovely day that I have out here outside in my gratitude, I'm gonna just take a walk around my neighborhood and I'm gonna ramble about everything I know about content marketing. And then I'm gonna take that transcription and imagining if it was this line here, I'll pull up the uh, AI assistant and if I type in outline, there's a system prompt that says generate an outline for an article. It will take your voice ramble and it will generate an article out with uh, you know, some main points and then the sub points underneath it. You can then take that. So imagining this whole thing was my article outline and we could have it blog post. And I'm going to warn you, the blog post is not going to be great, but it gets you past the cold start problem. And I think it's pretty certain that very soon it will be excellent as they improve AI technology. So already this takes the legwork off of you uh, to do the structuring, to, you know, write the first draft and then you can just edit it, which is a lot easier than writing from scratch. I also use it for a lot of things when writing, like if I need an example, an analogy, I can ask AI to do that. Um, there's some really good system prompts, like um, generate a counter argument. So you can kind of find the holes in your logic. You can find missing pieces of information. So it's just a ton you can do for writing with AI. I think it's been one of the first applications that's really useful for it, but People kind of discount it for writing because they assume you're just going to go into chat GPT and they write me an article about content marketing. And yeah, that, that article is just not going to be very good, but you can use AI to take the legwork off of you. Oh, and the last thing I could mention on that, you can actually write your article using your voice. So once you have your outline, I will just go through the outline and speak my article and then have it act as your copy editor. So once you have that draft, um, you can uh, clean up your writing with it. You can have it improve it. So basically every step from ideation to research to organizing information to actually writing and then editing, you can have it help you with for writing. Okay, the last one is the research paper. Uh, let me go quickly pull a research paper into my demo notes here so I can show you. I'll be right back. Oh, so I have a research article that I had saved in my actual and I moved it over to my demo brain here. By the way, I used the Chrome extension to just save this link and it's now directly um, in my notes here. And then I highlighted the actual article. So it appears in my highlights and I have a bunch of highlights this is a really long one. So now what I can do is go into search and let's say I'm going to just search my links. And all these notes on the left here are now the links that I have saved. And this is, of course, appearing at the top because I just saved it. But let's say I don't remember the article that I saved or really anything about it. So I can then go into my chat and start asking something. So I can say, do I have any information saved on cognitive plasticity? Hard word to say. And because my note appears in the notes that I've selected there, it will find it here. And it gives me a little bit of information from the article. And it's kind of interesting. And then it's nice. It gives you the actual source. So if I want, I can go back here. 
so I can kind of read this um, and maybe I can say, that's great. What is the impact of age on a cognitive plasticity? And so now I'm effectively just chatting with the research paper. So, uh, you know, you could do this with a lecture too. You could imagining if I was a university student, I could transcribe my entire lecture and then chat with it to study for my notes. If I'm trying to learn something new, I can just, uh, you know, save the research papers on it so that I can chat with it. So a really, really fun one. This is a new one. You could really use it not just for the research example, but you can chat with all of your notes and set these filters. Um, it's very, very fun. And we also have a semantic search now that I believe uses AI as well, although I'm not medicine certain on that. So um, just a fun feature to use in Reflect. There's very few tools that have a functioning AI chat right now, but I do think more and more will. So that concludes my workflows and this lesson. AI is so much fun to play with with your note taking. I really encourage you to go play around with it and do not sleep on voice note. It's the fastest way to record your thoughts and ideas in your notes. It's going to be the default. Set the shortcuts on your phone. We have videos on this of how to do this with Reflect. And it means that you can just do a single tap and start transcribing from wherever you are with whatever thoughts you have.